Thanks very much. Uh, today I'm going to be providing an update on the Cayman 2 Underground, which is really on the cusp of becoming Australia's uh, next copper mine. It's yeah, really good to be back here in person. Last time I spoke, uh, since then we have uh, been continuing to drill, continuing to expand the uh, resource estimate that we have. We've also uh, developed a, an initial mine plan which throws out about $200 million in free cash flow over the initial three years. The project is fully permitted. Uh, it has all of the necessary infrastructure in place, like processing plant, tail stem, et cetera. And we're now in the process of just finalising uh, the pre-production capital funding that's required before we commence operations in the near future. As you can see in the background photo here, the early works for the underground have already commenced and we're already encountering some really nice high-grade mineralisation. We'll jump in and take a look. So just first, a really brief corporate snapshot. We have a market cap in the order of about $90 million. Uh, we had $11 million in the tin at the start of the year. So an EV of around $80 million. And just want you to keep that into context as I sort of outline the value proposition that we have here today. So we are fully funded now to complete the remaining technical studies and to reach an FID point over the next couple of months, uh, after which we would be putting it into production, relatively short pre-production period, about seven months uh, until we're producing ore and then turning the mill back on towards the end of this year or early 2023. The only other thing I really want to draw your attention to on this slide in particular uh, is the carried forward tax losses, so a bit over $220 million. So obviously as we start to get into um, copper production and, and profit associated with that, um, there's some uh, high level value to the project gets delivered back. And in addition to that, we have over $17 million worth of franking credits, uh, which enable us to push out around $50 million worth of uh, fully franked dividends at the appropriate time. So for those that aren't familiar with the project, Camman 2 is located about 55 kilometres out of Adelaide between two large regional cities of Mount Barker and Murray Bridge. It's a really unique uh, value proposition. It's near term, low cost, uh, has a very quick uh, time frame into production and it has a, a high level of resource upside. So as it's talked about, it's fully permitted. We have great relationship with the local uh, townships of Callington and Camman 2. We have a three and a half million tonne per annum process plant that we're maintaining in the care and maintenance regime at this point in time. We have a tailings dam that's fully permitted and operational, has around seven and a half million tonnes worth of additional capacity. In addition to that, being based in the lovely Adelaide Hills, um, it's an excellent uh, place for a mining gig. Uh, so we uh, don't uh, expect to have any dramas in attracting and retaining a high quality workforce. Uh, it is the same geology, geotech and metallurgy as, as what we did in the open pit. So, Hillgrove actually mined here from 2020, uh, 2011 through to 2020. Uh, we produced around 137,000 tonnes of copper and about 55,000 of ounces over that decade from a series of open pits. So what we're looking at here is really just a restart of the previous operations with a different mining methodology. With regards to exploration upside, the stage one plan that I'm going to be talking about today, it talks to about two of the nine known deposits that have been either mined or uh, drilled as part of that open pit operation. So there's a whole heap of upside with regards to exploring the remaining uh, site. And in addition to that, we have three advanced exploration opportunities within 10 kilometres of uh, the processing plant. And uh, with the plant running at about a 40% capacity, there's a huge amount uh, of, of upside in that we are able to bring any of these additional loads into the mine plan without there being any material uh, capital requirement or any permitting requirements for the process plant. So we have established a stage one plan, uh, it basically at a very high level, uh, it pushed out about $200 million in free cash flow over a three year period. Uh, it has a, an MPV in the order of about $166 million for an, an, I, an IR at about 389%. So yeah, hugely valuable project, uh, really quick payback. Uh, we're only seeking uh, about $26 million in pre-production capital to put this into operation. And we're currently advancing discussions uh, with a debt funding uh, group in order to uh, get that started in the near term. The following video here is just a time elapse um, of basically where we're up to, just to give you a context of the pit and some of the early works that we have started. We have pushed in a main decline using a Komatsu MC51. It's a, a, a new bit of technology. We were able to get $2 million out of the state government uh, to fund a trial here. And uh, this has enabled us to basically fast track some of the um, underground works ahead of uh, an FID position. 
So the machine has come in here, it's cut a lovely profile. We would have liked to have got a bit further than, than what we did, but essentially this machine has been able to create two portals, so one for the ventilation drive, one for the primary decline. And, and what this has enabled us to do is to push the decline in far enough that we can uh, establish an underground uh, drilling platform, so some stoke definition drilling. It's given us a really good look at the geotechnical conditions in addition to that, it's enabled us to set up some of that uh, initial uh, services in front of the portal uh, all before a development, uh, uh, all, of it, all before we have to make a, a final investment decision. Uh, the machine then was replaced with traditional uh, drill and blast methodology just so we could push the decline a little bit further just to establish the uh, the stoke definition drilling platform, uh, which we are currently putting in place now and with stoke definition drilling starting over the next week or so. And, uh, and then uh, when the MC51 went up to the ventilation drive, you know, we, we hit the mineralisation within 13 metres, so really short distance uh, to be able to get this uh, in place. And uh, we've started trucking a bit of that uh, ore to the ROM in preparation for the mill restart. From a timeline point of view, uh, all the grey bars here are complete and the orange is what's required uh, to get it to first copper. So essentially, we've got a couple of big ticket items that remain. Uh, we, we essentially need to resolve the funding package. So we're now uh, signed term sheets and we're in the definitive documentation stage. I expect that'll be uh, completed over the next couple of months. In addition to that, we are just working through a mining contractor selection process. Also, I expect to be finished um, in a similar time period. After that, we'll be taking it to the board for a final investment decision and then uh, uh, like I said, about seven months of, of pre-production works uh, until we're into uh, our first stopes, and then shortly thereafter producing copper. So really short time frame to first copper. So that's the stage one plan. So it's $196 million, uh, three year plan, about $26 million of pre-production capital. Now the plan's relatively small and deliberately so, and I'll just take a little moment to explain that. Um, we're afforded with a huge luxury, which is the processing plant, um, but in order I guess to make sure that uh, the restart is very low cost and, and quick, we made a decision early on uh, to make sure that we retain all of the energy contracts, the water contracts. So we're pumping water through the entire mill system on a daily basis. We're turning the crusher system on every week, running the conveyor system every week, inching the mill. And I guess in doing so, there's a cost incurred with that. So we set out with a stage one strategy which was basically to spend as little money as we could, take as short a period as we could to get a debt fundable uh, mining plan together. And I guess when we took this plan out to uh, financiers towards the end of last year, um, we got a very strong response. So we'd say that we've achieved that and uh, we look forward to completing that, that funding package. But it's no uh, way near the entire value opportunity that we're sitting on at the moment. So we have depth extension opportunities under the two main loads that we have been putting into this stage one plan, as well as a, a further seven areas within the permitted mine lease um, that we would seek to explore uh, to add both mine life and annual throughput. So just to put this into context a little bit, this is a long section. The grey areas here are the open pits. Uh, all the coloured dots there are positive drill hole results. Um, and the black boxes are basically representing the extent of the stage one uh, plan, which is limited to about 250 metres in depth below uh, the largest pit. So in addition to that, what we have is the, the Kavanagh load. So Kavanagh was an area we put out uh, some, some, mineral, uh, some, some drill hole intercepts recently, yeah, 170 metres, about 1.1% copper. There's another 166 metres at 0.9%. So these were generally in the order of 10 to 30 metres in width, one to 3% to uh, copper equivalent. And that's what we'll be targeting the stage one plan. Uh, but again, it only went down, or the mine plan only goes down to about 250 metres because of the scarcity of drilling below that. But we have uh, yeah, put plenty of holes in below uh, the 250 metre mark. In fact, we've drilled down now to 500 metres and we're demonstrating that mineralisation continues to that depth and is still open at depth. The lowest hole we've got in this area is actually uh, three metres at 1.1% copper and a whopping you know, five grams per tonne uh, of gold. So an excellent target that we'll be following up on. I would fully expect that uh, as we are able to do more drilling at depth in Kavanagh, um, that that will translate then into depth extension beyond the initial mine plan. Nugent's a similar story. So Nugent was an open pit, it was mined uh, 2015, about 100 metres in depth, 300 metre strike length. Uh, we've been uh, drilling this area now um, over the past months. We put out some drill releases this morning. Um, and what it basically shows on the right hand image here is the blue blocks there representing the extent of the resource that's gone into the stage one plan. All the yellow dots there represent the new drilling. So you can see here, there's a lot of positive drilling results that sit 
both below and south along strike of the uh, Nugent ore load. So as we get these drilling results into a resource model, they'll be incorporated into the mine plan and we'll see an extension to the existing stage one plan. Still on Nugent, this is just a cross section of the same thing. Again, uh, the blue blocks and red blocks effectively representing the resource model of stage one plans built around. And you can see all those nice high grade hits that are sitting below um, the pit, or sorry, below the, the resource model, which will allow that to expand once those drill hole intercepts are incorporated into the model. In addition to the depth and strike extensions that we have in Nugent and Kavanagh, we have another couple of areas we call South Hub and North Hub. So South Hub is a collection of three different work areas. It's Critchley, Pringa and Emily Star. Emily Star was again a mined area in about 2013 to 14. Uh, it was about 100 metres in depth and remained open at depth below the open pit. Uh, Critchley Pringer, you can see some of the uh, excellent drill results we had there. So 17 metres, 3.6% copper, you know, half a gram gold credit. You know, really nice intercepts to be able to follow up and bring those into an initial underground resource that then we could incorporate into a, a future mine plan. On the other side of the pit, we have what we call North Hub. North Hub, again, a collection of a couple of targets, North Kavanagh and Coopers. Uh, and uh, Kavanagh, North Kavanagh was an area we did mine a portion of as part of the open pit, very steeply dipping. It's around 9 to 12 metres in width. Nice grades in order of about 1.8 to 2.1% copper with a half gram gold credit. Uh, the issue with it from an open pit point of view is because it's very steeply dipping in nature, uh, as you go down a few benches, the strip ratio gets too high to warrant it chasing it from an open pit. So it wasn't the main target, but from an underground, it's perfect. It sits right adjacent to the ramp, so we can drive effectively straight into the ore load. Um, so we, we have drilled that uh, around 200 metres of strike length there, down to a depth of about 100 metres, um, and we've just put one hole uh, that's a, at about 350 metres in depth just to demonstrate the mineralisation is still continuing. So that'll be another area that we focus on with, again, the intent to bring that into a future mine plan. So just looking at the process facility, I've, I've talked about how the process facility is a huge asset. What it really does is enable us to reduce the capital cost and reduce the time frame to get into uh, initial production. But uh, one of the, the things that, uh, well, there's another two, I guess, things that I want to touch on uh, with the process facility. Effectively, all these loads I've been talking about, um, they are additional loads that can be brought in without additional capital expenditure in the process plant. We only utilise about 40% of the milling capacity in the stage one plan. So bringing these loads in is relatively simple process to do, and they have the same metallurgical response as what we are experiencing in the rest of the site. In addition to that, because our loads are predominantly a high grade core with a lower grade um, halo, I guess we have the ability to be able to flex in response to changing commodity prices. So the higher the commodity price, the wider the stopes and the more material that we can uh, push through the mill and, and increase that annual throughput. And I guess what we have is the luxury of having an oversized plant with plenty of latent capacity so that we can do that again without any capital expenditure. I mean, you juxtapose that to other producers that may be looking at expanding their production. They've got huge capital costs, time, permitting requirements that they need to get through to be able to expand production. So just in summary, uh, what we have here is a permitted, low cost, low risk, near term copper production opportunity. Uh, we will get into production in 2022. Um, and uh, you know, with the, the strong financials, you know, $300 million um, with a relatively small capital requirement in the order of about $26 million, um, you know, we would anticipate that uh, you know, this will, this will uh, be an excellent project um, to start and, and provide sufficient cash flows to then reinvest and uh, grow the mine life beyond that. Um, and I guess back to that first point around EV, uh, given that uh, you know, we are positioned right in front of the copper production and we have this bullish outlook on uh, copper prices, you know, we think that uh, an EV of $80 million is an exceptionally good value proposition. Thanks very much for your time. Lovely.